Good morning. I'm Jerry Warnick here at uh, Sierra RV. I'm a delivery specialist here and my job is to to go around our RVs and our trailers and introduce our customers and show them how to use the different features and functions. In this particular one here, this is a, a Tuscany, a 34 footer. and. Uh, we're going to walk around the outside first and show you the different features and how to, f and then we'll proceed inside. Mirrors here, you'll notice inside you'll have a camera on each on the side of each one of these uh, on each side, and the camera as you turn the turn signals, and we'll refer to them again later. I just want to show you where that camera is up there. Up front on this one, now this is a this is a diesel powered uh, motorhome, and so. The engine is in the rear, the generator is in the front. To access the generator, and this is something a lot of people spend a lot of time looking for, there's a little lever right under here which is real easy to miss. You just pull that lever, that'll open the front for the, gener for the generator access. Everything else in here is your hydraulics for the, for the levelers, which uh, they're operated from inside. And that's pretty much all you need to know about those. I've got the slides in on this, on this coach, and when we get inside, we'll pull the slides out. That'll make it easier for me to show you the, the features on the outside of the motorhome. Here's your fuel. Now, I, I mentioned this is diesel. It's green, so you want to make sure you get the green pump each time for your diesel fuel. It's 100 plus gallons of, of fuel, which will give you pretty good range out there. Under here, you'll see the little yellow cap. That's where your, your uh, propane is filled. Most of this is storage, an awful lot of storage here. I understand we're not supposed to put our kids in there. But I'll leave that up to you. Over here we have a slide out storage. Now the nice thing about this, this Tuscany motorhome is its ease of, of uh, operation. Unlike some of them become very complicated and require a technology degree to use, this is very simple and uh, very functional. In here you've got a slide out which pulls out for your luggage and goes all the way across the underneath of the motorhome. Gives you better access to your to your storage. Over here, this is your this is your port for dumping all your tanks and accessing your tanks. Let me run around this real quick. You've got an outside shower here, which with water access. Now, there's a couple of things you can wash off the kids and the dog, but also if you make a mess dumping your tanks, you can kind of wash that off out here because this is where you're going to do that. And that runs through the water heater so you have hot and cold water out of here. This is your sewer Santa flush tank. That is hooked up to a spigot. When you dump the black tank, you hook up to a spigot, and when that black tank is open, you turn on the spigot and that'll wash out your, your black Let me tank. Let show you quickly. I'm sure you've already seen this. There's a cap that unhooks here so you can bring your your sewer drain hose right in here and hooks up to here. This is your gray, that's your drains, this is your black. You'll always, you'll always dump your black tank first. After you've dumped the black tank, if you've used the Santa flush and that's flushed, turn off the spigot, close the black tank, then reach down and open the gray. The gray will come in and wash out your sewer uh, hose doesn't sanitize it, but it does kind of wash out anything that's in that hose. This is for your water antifreeze, and with everything that I'm showing you, I, I strongly not only recommend, but you need, to, you need to read your owner's manuals, perhaps many times, because to get through some of the functions, to the uh, dewinterizing function, if you do that here, you'll need to read that. These tanks, it says city and tank, this is if you're filling your fresh water tank. You're going to be running off the water pump. And this is if you're hooked up to city water here. And uh, this is just for winterizing bypass. And then you have a filter for your, for your water and your drinking water. 
Up here, you have a propane shut off. Why do you shut off the propane? I recommend shutting off the propane here whenever you pull up to fuel. Uh, regulations are when you fuel your tank, any combustible protein, propane thing needs to be in the off position. So you just reach in here and turn this off, fuel your tanks, and then you're good. Water pump, if you're gonna be operating from here, instead of having to run inside the coach to turn on the, the water pump, you can do that out here. That way you can utilize the shower and the function here without running in and doing that inside. And you don't have to hook up fresh water either, because that's all, all here. Pretty simple. And I would recommend, even though you're between slides there, I recommend dumping tanks when your slides are in. That way you're not walking around and, and uh, risking bumping your head. Now again, this is a diesel. And because it's a diesel, the diesel emission fluid is a required fluid in all diesel engines. It cleans the, the fuel emissions. You have a tank right here. It's got a blue cap on it. Now most of the places that you'll pull into fuel, they also have, a, they call it DEF, D-E-F. They have a, a hose available for that as well. You have a gauge here that shows you how full that is. I would always top it back off when your gauge is in the half, half full position at least. I wouldn't let it go any longer than that. Again, this is some storage. You have batteries, your house batteries. This is your, your shore cable. It's a 50 amp cable and it just, it just rolls back into here when you unplug. One thing to just be sure of whenever you've plugged into your shore cable into the power, make sure that you've unplugged it and rolled it up before you take off. Something a lot of people do and uh, so they've either, dam either damaged their coach or pulled off the pedestal or left their cord behind. So make sure that, that that's rolled up when you do your walk through around the, the motorhome. This is your diesel power plant back here. Now, the things that you're gonna be concerned about here, this is your oil fill. This is the oil check. And this is transmission fluid. This you don't need to worry about or touch. This is a data port. You don't have the technology to, to mess with that anyway. So just uh, uh, leave that where it is. Everything else, that's all you need to access back here. And I would recommend strongly following all the instructions that you have on how often to replace the, uh, the oil, change the oil, and, and everything else. This is, this is the back of your furnace. Nice place to warm your hands if it's cold, but a terrible place to touch. This thing really gets hot, so keep that in mind. Back here, this is your inverter. Nothing that you need to do back here. If you have problems, of course, a mechanic will, uh, will take care of those things. But nothing in here that you need to worry about or, or service. Here you have some more batteries. You have batteries that run the house, the batteries that run and start the, the engine. If the engine battery should, should run down, you have a button in here that I'll show you where you can start using the house batteries. This is an, another furnace. This is your fresh water tank that fills from the other side that I showed you when you have it on tank. But it can also be filled from here. Just by taking it off, holding a hose up there and filling that tank. I would recommend that if you ever fill from here, that you use the same hose all the time for this. You use a separate hose for the Santa flush that I showed you over there. Because the Santa flush is a direct connection to the sewer tank and this is, a, uh, is your fresh water compartment we talked about. It is climatized. You also have access to your central vacuum in here, so you can clean out down here with your hoses that you have in, inside. And again, more storage. 
always uh, as you take off make sure that these doors are are closed you'll look in your mirror one time and you'll see this door flying out because you forgot it so just be sure that these things are closed you have an outside TV for outside entertainment under the awnings and uh, well, you'll have remotes that operate all of these as well this is another fuel tank for on the other side so you can fuel in a at either side as you pull in that's always a question and it's towards the front so you're you'll be able to see when you're when you're lined up and uh, that brings us around to the other side main the main door now you'll notice that as I close the door the stairs go in and we're getting ready to go inside the coach now and uh, now the real fun begins because we get to learn about all this really neat technology that makes it easy for you to to uh, run down the road and enjoy your vacation now these steps will lock in the down position or the out position if you push a little button inside that I'll show you that way you can go in and out if you're camped multiple days or something you don't have to wait for the stairs to go up and down you just open the door and the, the stairs will stay up now right inside here let me get up here and I'll, we'll try to the, as you as you enter the door you have a a panel right down here which are they're in that position because there are things you might want to access as you enter the coach for example you have your light switches here and these are the the lights up above these are all your lights these are your awnings both the the awning that's over your head here as you enter and the the big awning back here um, and also this is the the first slide you have three slides here the one is the large slide on this side and then the two smaller sides on the other slides on the other side the key has to be in the on position to be able to run out the slides right now the key is off I'm going to reach over here turn the key in the on position that little beep is going to continue to beep as long as that key's in the on position but it gives you access to the slides right here this allows you to get into the coach to get to the other control panel to let out the other slides now you do have to hold these buttons while they go out now there's also I said the, the extend the awning here the house battery now what that house battery does is if you're leaving your coach for a while you can turn that house battery off and it won't take any battery power as you enter to use the functions in the in the coach you'll need to push this first battery it says house battery turn that on and then you can use the functions inside the coach there's a step cover which I'll show you in a minute this is the step on and off switch this is the button that I was just commenting on the steps if you turn it into the off position those steps are going to stay out when you close the door and then you have an awning light and a step light you'll notice the light overhead and the step lights here let's get some light in here okay all right you can come on in the, uh, as we entered I turned the key on if you'll remember but it, it'll let me pull out the slides the key has to be on but in order to pull out the awnings the key has to be off it's off now so let me show you the awnings it's and then this is the main awning here the 
important thing to remember is when the key is in the on or the off position. It's in the off position here, so we have to do it when the trailer, when the RV is parked. It can't let those things out while you're moving down the road. Okay, that's fully extended. All right, now we'll come on in. Now why don't we come back to the cockpit up here. There's a lot of things that I want to show you up here. But let's go back into the coach and then we'll come back and last we'll, we'll go through the, uh, the cockpit. Now, you'll note the slides that are on this side of the RV are still in. So normally what we'll do first before we do anything else is we'll come back in here. And I'll show you the leveling system in just a minute. Normally if you're going to let out the slide you can go ahead while the engine's running and lower your level of jacks so that you're secure and stable on the ground. Okay, here's your here's your control panel for here. Right now it's on the home. This is showing your different tank levels. This tra this RV has been winterized, so therefore they're empty. All of our tanks are empty right now. And uh, and this is uh, your water heater, electric or gas, you can and the water pump. Those are all off right now. This is just your your power is coming in from the shore cable. This is your generator. You can the generator right now is stopped, and I'll show you the, the buttons to, to turn on the generator. Right here, this is your uh, these are your slides here. The main slide over here is already out. We just let it out, but it can it can be let out from here. Oh, well, my key is not on. I'm glad I did that because now uh, you realize that key's got you got to be here in that tone for it to go. All right. That's the slide up here in the the dinette. Now obviously before we let out the slides, we've already walked around the coach. We've seen that there's nothing in the way. We're not parked too close so that there's clearance to the, for those to go out. Otherwise you, you could damage those. Now, if you're if you're plugged in to electricity here at a at a park, then then everything is going to work off of that. If you're not, then you'll want to have the generator on so it can it runs everything else. I noticed that this little compartment here, this is slides in. Now, on the back bed, there's a a large cushion. This table, you just pull the latches. This table comes right down onto here and then that large cushion goes here and it forms a bed. And then we just lock these. And uh, right now, everything that we need off that off of that key is turned on. So we're good. And so I'm going to turn that uh, beeper off so we don't have to listen to it. Back here, these are, other than this one, these are your light switches. This you can turn the lights off back here. Kitchen ceiling lights, you have access to those back here so that if you're back here you don't have to walk up into anywhere else. Here's your generator start and stop. What you'll do is you hold the generator stop in and then you'll hold this in 
and it'll start the generator. You hold that until the generator starts. It's a diesel generator. It's running off the diesel fuel that you have in the coach. So you can turn on the generator back here. I'll also show you up on the front panel where you can turn that generator on up there. And I'll tell you why you'll want to do that in a few minutes. Your washer and dryer are going to run off electricity, either if you're plugged in or if the generator's working, either one. They won't work off the, the battery inverter that doesn't have enough power, so you've got to be plugged into electricity or your generator is running. Then you can run your washer and dryer. And all of that's covered very well. The other thing that I want to make sure back here, I don't have to tell you how to operate your closet, but the important thing back here is when you're running down the road, make sure that these are latched. So if they don't, otherwise, if they're left in this open position, they're going to slide all over and the chances of them breaking are pretty good. So just make sure that these are latched when you're driving. As well as anything back here, when you get ready to pull in the slides, make sure that all the drawers are closed. That bed's going to slide all the way up against this cabinet. If the drawers are open, uh, it'll probably push them closed, but I said probably because I don't, you don't want a, the, the bed fighting with the drawers because the bed will win, the drawers will lose, and you'll end up replacing them. So make sure everything here is, is closed off. And same thing here that you have so that this doesn't fly around. Make sure that it's latched right here into this position. The refrigerator is the same as a, is a, is a house refrigerator. While you're traveling down the road, it's running off the inverter. When you're, when you're stopped and you're not running, you're going to want to either be plugged in or have the, the generator working to run the refrigerator. So it's just like, the, just like your home. Got an ice maker in here and uh, lots of room. Can be out on the road for a long time. Just make, you just want to make sure here Again, that this latch is latched when you're traveling, so that it's not going to, the door won't fly open when you're, when you're driving. Bathroom. The important thing in here, again, are the latches. These are glass doors, and uh, this will, will latch. and now it's not going to fly around. If these latches ever get broken and you're driving, what I'd do is lay a, uh, a pillow or something down in the track so that the doors don't fly around. These latches do break occasionally, and so if you're still traveling on the road, rather than just leave them unattached, lay something down on the, on the runner here so that it'll keep the doors from, from flying around, okay? Lights, fan, and these will all, you've got the lights, these operate the fan overhead, and so you'll want to run those when you're showering or now. In here, these pieces of granite, your stove works off gas and we're not turned on right now because we're inside the, inside the building so we're staying nice and warm. These, you turn it into the off position, crank the starter and that will light up each of the, the burners independently. There's no oven here because you've got a microwave convection that does both. Okay, if you haven't, haven't operated the convection yet, you'll want to, again, read your uh, owner's manual to learn how to, to operate that efficiently. But uh, other than that, just keep in mind that you want to make sure that these are off before you travel down the road. That's just common sense. 
to me the most important thing over here is that if you leave these sitting on top of the counter really heavy and uh, you're driving down the road and hit your brakes they're going to go somewhere and uh, they're going to cause some damage now they put a little lip over here but if you don't put these things down where they belong and you hit again uh, they could really damage they could hurt or, or hurt someone so make sure that all of these covers are down when you're when you're moving and that includes the covers over the sinks again that's a gr solid granite frisbee if it uh, if you hit those brakes so just make sure that that those are down um, the TVs will all operate off of your uh, your remotes from your remotes and they'll also all operate as you're driving down the road so someone can sit back here enjoy the television while you're driving you have the option of having uh, your uh, direct TV or or different uh, cable TV services wired into the, the trailer as well, or into the RV as well so now let's let's move up here to the probably the most important thing for your safety and let me make a couple more plugs for the owner's manual you want to go through that a couple of times technically as I sit up here my car probably has more buttons and features to confuse you than this does it's pretty straightforward okay, I came up okay this is these are your leveler jacks the engine has to be running when you pull into a spot you're going to be camping you're going to be there you're going to let out your slides you're going to do all of that you come right over here your engine will be running now I won't start the engine in here because I'm inside the building you just turn that on and it will say auto and I push the auto the jacks will come down all of them now you'll hear you'll get this it takes uh, could take three or four minutes five minutes to, to level all the jacks and you'll feel them coming down you'll feel them connect to the ground you might feel a little jerk here and there and once those are all level then you'll get a light up on the screen that they're lit then you can reach over here and turn this off the rest of the functions for the most part you can operate without the engine on but we'll go through those but it's important now when you turn the engine back on you're getting ready to leave then you've got to raise the jacks and there's a retract right here auto retract or all retract it then will retract all of the jacks that you put down you're going to be getting an alarm that's telling you that they're down uh, that doesn't mean that you can't still put it in drive and take off and damage them but it's going to give you plenty of alarms and warnings that those jacks are down so you'll do the all jacks auto they'll come up and then it'll tell you they're all up and when you've started the engine uh, the two most important things right here on this gauge are these two here these are your air tanks now I'm gonna make, make another recommendation right now I would go to your Department of Motor Vehicles and I would get the uh, commercial driver's license uh, book uh, which is the testing book and it, it for airbags or air brakes and then it will it, and then read that and study you don't have to get your commercial driver's license but it will give you the information on how to run a vehicle with air brakes really important so I, I highly recommend that okay over here this is your this is your drive panel reverse neutral drive and this is a manual mode just push that it goes to manual when you push that you started the engine and if you push that into drive it's going to give you an alarm because your brake is still set your foot will be on the brake here put it in neutral push in the yellow knob that's your this is your emergency brake can you see that one right down there 
That's the, that's your emergency air brake. When you pull up and you set, you put it in neutral and you pull that out and you'll hear the brake set. And that's, that's really critical. Now, when I start it, if those airbags, if the air has gone, I'm going to continue to get an alarm until these, until these needles go up to just below 100 pounds. I don't want to leave or until that, until that alarm is gone and those airbags are full. That's telling me that I've got my air brakes so that I'll be able to stop the coach. Okay? And uh, now I'll just, let me just go around this. This is for your mirror adjustment, adjusters here, just like you're used to on your vehicle. This is for heated mirrors. This heats the mirrors on the sides if they're frosted up, like that. Okay. Your light, your light controls are right down here. And please don't be intimidated by anything. You need to get this out and play with it a little bit and, and to understand this. Okay, this is a docking light, which is up front, so when you're pulling into a docking site, this is a cab light, which is right over our heads here. Now, keep in mind that if I'm driving down the road, and I want to heat the cab where I'm sitting, or we're sitting, these are the controls just like your vehicle will do that. It'll put out air conditioning and heat here. Now the rest of the coach, if I'm driving down the road and my coach is hot, I want to have the air conditioning on, then I'm going to need power from the generator to do that. So then I'm going to turn on the generator in order to power my air conditioning here. I can turn the furnace on back here on the thermostat that I'll go back to in a minute. But my air conditioning has got to have either the generator or electricity at a plug to do, to turn it on. So if I've got people riding back here and you want to keep it cool, then that generator is going to need to be running. Okay, and that's fine. Run the generator as long and as often as you want because your okay. comfort's everything. We were we were talking about over here. This is your heat and your air conditioning for the cab up front. Okay, this is your generator start. So if you want to run the air conditioning in the rear of the in the coach, then you'll start the generator here. Hold this down until the light comes on, and then you push the top. The, ge you'll, the generator will start. It will stay lit. And then you can have air conditioning and run the microwave and do anything you need to do in the back here. But without that generator, you can't run the air conditioner. Uh, you can't run the air conditioner or the microwave at all. You can watch TV, but you can't do the other. Over here, sunshade. Now, when you're in the now, some people get a little confused at this. When you're driving down the road and the engine's running. It will allow you to lower the sunshade, but you'll notice it will stop as it, when the engine's running. Well, my engine isn't running. This is your so this is your monitor here, your function monitor, and it's just by pushing this button, you can go through all the different, just like your vehicle, go through all the functions here. Again, your owner's manual is going to detail that a lot better than I will. So please, please go through that well and in detail. Over here again, this is, I want to come back to this, the airbags. When you're driving down the road, if you get an alarm for your air pressure, you'll want to pull over wherever you are. And that wherever, I, don't go to the next exit. If you get an alarm for your air, pull over. Stop. Look at the pressure. If they've gone down and they're starting to fill back up again, you're fine. When the alarm goes off, you're safe to move. If that alarm doesn't go off, turn off the engine and call for assistance. What will happen is if those gauges go down all the way, if all the air pressure is out of there, It'll lock a brake, so wherever you are, you're stuck. Now, what are the odds of that happening? About one in 10,000. That's never going to happen. But if it does, 
you ever get that alarm, pull over. And you want to do that and you want to call for service and they'll repair what needs to be done. Because it's not going to let you drive, it doesn't want you driving down the road with your, without brakes. Okay. Right down here, I haven't talked about that yet. There's a little lever. Can you see this? Right down here. If you pull this lever over to here, it lets the air out of the out of the coach, out of everything, and your 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 RV will lower closer to the ground, and all the air is gone. So now, when you get ready to go again, you're going to get alarms that say your airbags you're empty. You push that back in. Those bags are going to start to fill, and you're going to hear the alarms until it all comes up. And you're back to a normal position. So you won't want to. You don't ever, ever want. When you're getting an alarm, don't go. Stay put until everything's back where it needs to be. Your your coach is raised. Your airbags are inflated, and then your the alarm's going to go off, and you're free to to pull out and take off. And remember the engine again has to be running to, to lower the levelers. But it needs to be in the on position without the engine running to let the slides out. Now when you get ready to pull back in the slides, make sure that this chair especially, you've, you've leaned that back. See right now this chair can come all the way back here. It also revolves around. Here let me show you. Right here. This chair turns around like this and you've been using it to visit. Now you go over here. Oh, it's time to go and you're going to pull in that slide. You see that slide? It's going to come in on this chair. So we want to make sure that these chairs are in the face forward position before we pull in the slides. Otherwise it's going to break something again. And we don't want to do that. There's This is the lever right here. And then you have electric controls on the seat. Now there's one, one button over here that I didn't show you, which is the step cover. Let's see. It's right here, can be operated while you're here. And this gives the passenger an opportunity to sit here without having their feet dangling down under the steps. But you can, you can see that when you, when you want to get out, you're going to want to lower that, that cover again. I've had several people call that missed that part of it, and they're sitting here saying, How, you know, I, can't, uh, I can't get back on that thing. And just like your home, there's a recliner here. Now obviously, right now, I'm a long ways back. Do I have room be behind me to pull in that slide? Probably, maybe, maybe not. So be sure and check that if it is. And then this little button right here lowers my recliner. So play with them. Play with the, uh, the features, the buttons. Don't be intimidated by anything in here. Nothing in most of in most of these in here is where all your components for your audio visual are going to come in. Right now you have you have a DVD player. You're already wired here for whatever cable service you may have. They'll bring in their box, the wires to here and then you can have a satellite cable when you're traveling. And up here, you simply have light controls. If you're sitting here, you can control the lights from, from in this, from this seat. Okay. Okay, we feeling pretty good? I am, let's go down the road. The other thing I wanna make sure, if you get down and you've read the owner's manual and, and you still got some questions, give us a call. Our service department's here, we'll help you and we'll take care of answering any questions you might have. We want you to have fun, we want you to have a good time wherever, you're, wherever you are, and be able to operate the coach safely 
which is obviously paramount for all of us is to be to take a safe ride thank you